Hello everyone, my name is Ryan. Welcome back to the Pro Commentary series. And uh, as promised, today I, will, I am bringing you the uh, finals of the 2020 In Cup preliminary in North America. And uh, this match is between myself and Eric Louis 1P. Eric is probably also a person that doesn't need introduction. Uh, Eric became pro in 2016, but he's been very active in the Go community, uh, winning multiple titles, including the New Jersey Open, Maryland Open, and Cotton Open, which are uh, all very uh, big tournaments in the U.S. And he's also uh, been the U.S. representative in the LG Cup, the Samsung Cup, and Tamfu Cup. So uh, yeah, I played uh, many many games against Eric. So I kind of uh, had something prepared. Um, Eric's style is very balanced, so it's hard to uh, orient the game in any kind of way because you can kind of deal with anything. Uh, so in this game, I was black, so I'm gonna like dive straight in. Um, oh, it's it's like pouring outside, by the way. Um, hope you don't. Hope you guys can't hear that. Um, so, in the opening, I've kind of, for white, I've been playing this opening quite a bit because after the Kosumi, the pincer is quite big, and typically black will want to, like, defend their own corner, so then I can come back and pincer. That's kind of been my, uh, opening as white recently. Um, it's actually quite a popular opening these days. So in this game, black decided to play this, uh, large knight move. Um, so then, of course, why would approach the uh, empty corner? And typically, when you uh, approach, the uh, three four is bigger. But that, of course, that will depend on the orientation. But I, I felt pretty comfortable with this approach because if Black does the uh, nice move here, I can always do a pincer. Um, because this direction, I think, is good for White. I can also just do. To space extension or approach, I think all of them will be okay. But this is kind of like the orientation for like a long game, because you know, um, black just started something on white side and white starting something on black side. So typically, both sides would have a lower, like um, less territory in general. So in this game, actually, I was a little surprised that, um, that black played here because t and right now the three space extension is not as popular. And uh, because of the sh because of this move, um, and also looking at the top right, it's also not that give a good of a distance, because when white invades the three three, black still it's still uncomfortable, kind of what where black will block. So if black played this, I was prob I was actually just um, preparing to um, invade right here because if black blocks on this side, this. Stone is it, it's it's decent, but later there's still an invasion, um, and also this thing is kind of just there. Um, I, this is kind of like my take on like this Alpha Go shoulder hit thing is that if you leave it there, it's hard for Black to do anything to it. Um, it's kind of like a reduction of uh, Black's potential right here, rather than like a, a, a um, like a group of influence or anything like that. So yeah, I was like really prepared for like a long game, but actually in this game, um, Black played the jump. So actually, if you're wondering about kind of the low approach Joseki, when you have a further away pincer stone, it's typically not good when you push and cut. The closer the pincer stone is, usually the better it is when you push and cut. Um, so in this case, it's a three space extension, so Black doesn't really want to uh, start the fight here. So black pushes under, and so the knight's move is also like started by AlphaGo, I believe. And the reason why for this is because um, before we always play the jump. But with the jump, there's an attachment, which is very, very annoying, and it's very hard to respond to this attachment. Um, because if black pushes through, white can, white can cut. And this is actually what happens um, in the game. Uh, 
But if the old Joseki block would just connect um, and uh, do a two space extension. But I think this is definitely good for white. Um, actually, when I first saw this Joseki, I felt this was good for white because it was black's corner. Black, white takes sente and white takes the corner, which doesn't feel right at all. And actually, I think right now most people would, would, would agree with me. And the other Joseki is black extends up, but I also don't like this Joseki for black either. And now I think it's probably there's a consensus that this is good for white. Um, this isn't very strong, and also especially in this case, white has the Kosumi, so black's direction of this this influence is not uh, very good, so it's not going to be very useful here. While well, white is taking all the cash. Um, so yeah, I, I expected black to play the knight's move because it would be harder for black to follow up in this area. Now, something that I would like to talk about, which is the, the, the third push here. This move is actually pretty interesting. Um, I actually played it myself a few times, not a lot, but when black pushes a third time, it makes white even stronger. Um, at the expense of actually protecting this. So here, uh, Normally white can attach, but if you push an extra time, white might, well, the goal is that white won't be able to attach, so that black has more territory, and it prevents white from going to the corner easily. However, that's actually not quite true, because white can still attach, and not many people know about this. There's like a famous kind of trick variation, where when white attaches, black still tries to capture this. And this is actually falling for the trick because now white can push and cut on the inside. Um, this is important, you always need to cut on the inside. Now if black, of course if black captures this is not good because white will get the outside. Oops. Um, white will get the outside, so, sorry. Uh, like this. So actually, can white ladder this? Oh, I can actually ladder this right now, so that's even worse for black here. Um, but if, obviously black would want to save the stone, but then when white extends and descends, um, this is the uh, this is a very common way of, of reducing liberties. And why is it why is it asking me to do this? Um, here white has a Tsuji, white can play the knight's move here. And to to connect, black has to play the Kosumi. Then white will block here directly, and then block. So white can actually live in Sente, which is amazing and then white can come back to the middle so this is obviously really bad result for black so this is like playing stupid and falling for the trick but like if black comes back here um, white can actually go on the outside white doesn't have to go in the corner so that's that's the really important um, to know because if black if white has to go in the corner then this is this is actually may might be acceptable for black but in this case white can actually do this and there's no way for black to capture, so yeah, don't don't play this actually. Um, black cannot um, push through still, so that's why actually pushing here is not a very smart move because you have to honey anyway. And actually, I think uh, Park Jong Hwan played this once. White can push and block, and after black Atari's black can't really follow up anymore. Um, you might notice like this is a very awkward shape. Because um, the the only way to protect all the weaknesses is to play in the middle, which is a very still a very awkward shape you know, because you're kind of going inside and th both of these stones are weak. Um, so the best um, the best way for black to play is just a tanuki, and later if white cuts on one side, it will automatically fix the uh, weakness on the other. Um, so yeah, it's not a very popular way to play, but I think I guess it. It's still possible. So in the game we have the jump, and actually something really quick, um, a quick fight happened. Oops, sorry. Um, so, but I didn't expect Black to push and cut here um, because uh, White can push and cut, and after this, um, White can actually ladder the stone. So after this, obviously Black can't cut on Atari here because then the corner will be captured. So. Black has to connect, and then white just simply um, ladders. I was actually a little uh, nervous because I, I didn't really uh, play this very much. I was, I was thinking about this cut. Um, so I think 
white can capture, but I'm not I'm not too familiar with with this variation where I I think there could be like some sort of seki here, but I don't want to like tell you something that I'm not sure of. But you guys probably should read this out. Um, like if black does this and white does that, and is that what's that result? Probably someone will tell me in the comments. Um, so actually, I wasn't planning on playing this, so I kind of. Got, I, I kind of got lazy and didn't even read this out. I actually was playing on making Atari. So in this case, black um, can't extend because now um, black won't be able to surround white. So what black has to push on this side and capture. And then I was probably just going to invade or invade. Or actually probably just Tanuki and uh, defend the corner or something. So I was actually like really geared for the, for the long-winded game. Um, so yeah, I think this was nice. Um, actually, for this result, black can't just let white play a move to capture because locally, this is that this is worth more than spending two moves in this corner because after this, um, this is all sente. So black's corner is super small, and the outside is too strong. So this is too efficient for white. So black can't let that happen. Black has to benefit somewhere else. Here, obviously, black can't escape because. Of of the ladder, so in the game we have the attachment. And this move really made me scratch my head because I, I don't really know how to respond to this. So what does this move mean? So it looks like a really weird move. But so obviously it's 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 kind of some sort of ladder breaker, right? So it's so it's getting at um, threatening to extend here. Um, and of course white can't really so uh, white doesn't really want to black to spend two moves up up there if you keep playing because the more you play um, the more white is risking to lose but white doesn't want to just capture also because then black would get two moves so black can probably do whatever either here or here I'm not sure which one probably um, actually I don't know maybe maybe just extend out so something like that um, but then I actually found actually a better solution. So I think this would be an acceptable variation for white. Just to do that and uh, maybe uh, play Tiger's Mouth and then extend. I think this would be a decent result because this is actually a very efficient result for white. I'm not sure what the AI thinks about this, but I kind of, I, I was kind of expecting this. But I actually found out. But this attachment, I, I personally think this is a really good move, um, that you can actually Hane. Because right now, black st still can't escape this stone. So if you look at the ladder, it kind of cuts off here, so white can tar it down. So the ladder doesn't work for black yet, which means black can't escape here. And the problem with this is that if black spends a move on this side, it's not directly sente, so white can actually capture the corner. And if black extends, white can actually connect and actually do like the liberty race here. Um, it looks kind of complicated, but it seems that white will have the advantage. And if that is the case, then the corner will be captured. This is actually not co, it's actually like a, like a weird double co, like if you're wondering about this. Um, if you throw in here, it's like a kind of an awkward double co. Here. Here, so it's not actually code. The corner is actually dead like this, um, which means black actually has to respond by capturing. And this is really good for white because after getting this exchange, this extension move is no longer as severe as before. Because if you think about it, after black, let's say let's say black has the ladder. Um, I'm just gonna black obviously won't do this, but if black has the ladder then of course white's not going to be able to get a honey and connect and sente. So this is a really good exchange for white to get in at this kind of moment. So after getting this exchange, the stone becomes lighter, which means white can um, fight more freely in the top left because in the case where black just extends, white can probably just jump and sacrifice this if white gets enough benefit. So, uh, what do I mean by that? It means that black cannot play too aggressively and lose too much in the top left. 
which is giving white a lot of leeway here. So in game white hanes and then black cut still. So black is still trying to get something big here, and which this actually at this point the game becomes a lot more complicated because no, not only the players have to evaluate the value of the top left, um, they have to compare it to the value of, ex of black escaping, and I think AIs are really good at that. Um, personally, I got really caught up with this fight, but I think it, the, the result was still relatively acceptable for white. So after white extends, black kept pushing, and this is again getting at the ladder break here. If white just captures the stone, black will be able to play some sente moves, um, and then escape here. So even though white benefited in the top left, it's probably not enough to make up for the loss here. So at all times you're kind of evaluating, well, am I gaining enough here or compared to this? Should I keep this and lose a little bit? You know, that is really hard. And I think that's one of the most wondrous things about Go is just there's so many variations to consider. And uh, it's also what makes Go very tiring. So yeah. So after this Cut. <laughs> um, again, this is just um, to get at. So here, black can't really do anything else because after this, black white still has the ladder, which is really nice. I and mean, also, black can't doesn't really have a good move here. So black pretty much ha this is the only move. But this actually lets white have a lot of more options. Um, I'm not going to go over all the options here because it's really going to get quite complicated. So we're just going to talk about the variation game. So in the game, white Ataris and, and pushes here. Um, there's probably two... Yeah, this is pretty much force. So bl black obviously can't let white simply get a Panuki here, so black needs to extend first. And then uh, black still doesn't have a good move to follow up. Um, neither of these Ataris are good. And obviously um, there's a ladder here. So white, black can't uh, let white do that, so black needs to exchange one, then go back to the corner, and then white captures the stone. So everything here is pretty much forced after white picks the uh, Atari here. And the reason why I, made, I picked this Atari is because after black lives in the corner, white still has the ladder, so that is really good. <clears throat> so here, black captures the corner, and then white turns. So I think the local result is probably even, and that was my goal. Um, is if I can keep the result in the left, top left corner even, then obviously white has a huge profit in the lower right. And so black jumps, and then white jumps. So this is all pretty normal. The reason why I didn't want to make this Atari, um, I, I didn't feel this was too big. Um, and also if white Atari is now black, probably capture the stone. So. Just jump, push, and jump. So here there's a slight mistake. Um, here white could actually extend one space further. I was a little too safe with that move. And that actually was uh, probably the first questionable moves that white played here. Um, the reason why white can make the two space extension is because if black were to um, attaching cut, Y can actually just capture the stone and go into the corner. So this is a bad result for black because after doing this, Y can still um, jump out the stone. So it's not a big deal if black cuts. Black sacrifices a lot of territory and uh, not gain too much here on the side. So if Y can make the two space extension, Y should definitely do that. Um, and I think kind of regret this a little bit. However, um, in the game it seems okay because here black actually attached. Because I think right now it's, it's really hard for black um, to play. Because here, playing a move in this area is actually not a ladder breaker. So if black turns, I believe white can, yeah, white can just ignore that and just uh, take the territory here. Make this group strong, that is alive, and this is pretty much white's goal. Um, splitting black up. So black doesn't really use that first store advantage very well. And this would be really good. So here black is trying to find a place to fight here. So white extends. I think that's pretty much the only move. And then black pushed again. Um, and I 
Probably the third push was slightly questionable. Um, I think what Black should do here is just um, jump out um, and uh, continue on the right side, or perhaps just not do it anything at all. Yeah, um, because after the push, after White gets into the center, it's it's actually even harder for Black to continue because. Here after white hanes, black can't cut. And uh, again, this this ladder breaker is not urgent enough, so um if so there's it, white black can't really get any sentes because this group is about to get captured. So here black has to go back here. And then the problem with this is that white can actually get this in sente because these two stones are obviously vital stones, so black can't lose them. And after getting the sente White comes back here to make the group alive. And now these two groups are separated, so it's even harder for Black to make anything too useful in the center. So, right now the game looks really good for White because, again, this profit in the lower right is very great. Um, black is too small in the corner, and White gets it. So after the jump, that is finally the ladder breaker to threaten the uh, escape. So. The whole thing in the top left was kind of as a result of this. <laughs> this small thing in the uh, other side of the board. So what happened here? Um, Black takes the corner, which is about seven points. Um, and that's about it. So you can't really say this is too much influence because um, it's still not too strong yet. White definitely has more points than Black. So I think the local result is probably even. Not to mention this is a potential weak group. So I think White definitely achieved his goal because this is relatively even, big profit, so White is ahead here. So Black made this attachment and uh, right now it's I guess it's kind of like a point where you're trying to simplify the game. So here I probably um, didn't do that so well. So here, um, the easiest thing to do is just to push and just uh, slide this over and then just invade. So I think this is probably the easiest um, way to, to go about it. These stones doesn't look like you're gaining too much, but actually these stones are going to be useful in the future when attacking this and also help protect this in the, in the, in the uh, future. And also getting this invasion is also very big. So I think that's probably the best way. And I th think, I believe, when I looked at the AI after the game, this is probably, the, this is exactly what they uh, recommended. So I do kind of regret not taking this because it's it really made the game much more complicated. Um, so invasion, black. So black doesn't have time to do this because after this, like, this is too strong. So, um... It's really hard for Black to continue here. So Black has to jump. And then doing the two space extension. I do regret this a little bit because it it makes um, this a lot more complicated. Um, so right now, obviously, Black does still does have this group to worry about. So Black makes the peep. And actually, Tanuki's again. So here, you, we can definitely see Black's fighting spirit because here, um, obviously, Black is behind and if white is able to get all the rest of the territory, black, black wouldn't have enough. So even though I keep mentioning that white is ahead, you, it's, it's kind of hard to see in terms of territory. Because in terms of territory, it's actually about the same on the board. So obviously black has this. It's not fully territory yet, but it's definitely... You have to, you have to account at least like 20 points here. Another uh, 35, 45. White doesn't have much territory yet, so White still needs to work hard to convert that influence into territory. So obviously this is a weak group, this is also a weak group, so um, White is all a lot stronger. So that's um, a pretty hard problem actually. So um, well, I guess my question is, where would you play right now? Um, I think I'd probably spend... 10 to 15 minutes on this. Um, oh, by the way, the, the time settings are one hour each in 60 second, Yoyomi. 
Um, so the Biomi is relatively um, not as stressful, so I wasn't too um, worried about time, but I think I had quite a lot of time at this point, which allowed me to actually think for like 15 minutes. Um, I was really mostly trying to judge what to do to either this group or this group, because right now it's it's like a turning point of the game. What? How does White respond to this? This is obviously an invasion, and White Black has like four groups, but it's not trivial to see what to do here because this group might be entangled within the fight as well. So then, my next move might be a little surprising to some of you. Uh, so after I jump, Black jumps. Um, and then the invasion. So, I kind of um, saw. I, I kind of sold that a little short here. Um, so the jump here is probably. I was, I was kind of thinking to do something already. So, um, actually, when I jumped, I already decided what to do on on the top right. So I I spent on, I spent the time here, but then. I was actually thinking about invading an invasion there. So I made some exchanges here. I'm not sure whether that's good or not. Um, the reason why I did this is because I didn't really want Black to just attach and connect everything. So I made the jump to make sure he doesn't he's, he's not able to do that. And then finally go into the top right corner. So here is um, white is actually relatively strong because if Black tries to uh, um, what did I play in the game? I, yeah, I didn't. I played uh, the three three invasion. If Black tries to attack, this White can also always just attach out, and it's pretty much impossible for Black to cut. So, after this group, um, I decided to go the three three. So, um, <clears throat> in the game, Black was very um, resilient, um, not letting White get anything here. So, for this um, three three invasion. I think there's a concept that everyone needs to remember is you pretty much can never block here if you're going to let this happen or if you're going to let this happen. Um, I see this quite a lot and this is a generally a really good result for white and it makes actually kicking kind of pointless um, because you, you're kind of losing the same amount of territory anyway so there's no point in trying to get a quick corner um, this way. So the uh, only moves that you should be thinking about... So actually, sorry, um, it's it's different when you can actually Hane and connect and actually cut the outside. So, so there's some cases where this can happen. Let's say if Black had a stone here, then this is possible. So that's that's kind of like a different situation. But for this case, you pretty much have to descend or play this one. So the problem with this one is that this is a good exchange for White to get Laji on the side. When black descends, it puts the most pressure on this group, but it lets the cornerstone live kind of pretty easily. So right now is not going to be good for black to descend. So here, black pretty much has to play this, and I kind of expected that. Um, get but getting this exchange is good. And then another exchange here. Uh, it's a uh, quick sente here, um, because. I th this was my plan to help with with uh, what I was going to do on the upper side. So the uh, invasion here. So I thought about this for quite a while and kind of what Black will do and like the jumps and the knight's moves and all that stuff. So um, I think there are two kind of main branches that are kind of uh, possible for Black that are decent. One is the jump here. And the other one is what happens to the game. So with this jump, it's hard for White to get out into the center. But White can actually peep here and uh, just go into the corner. And this is what I, uh, what I was planning on doing. And just doing this. And so I think descending is important because um, Black can actually jump in and make this group stronger. It's quite a lot of points. So after this, White kind of this is the way f this is kind of like my scheme of getting back the territory in balance so here I'm saying well you can do whatever you want here but as long as I get the territory white is going to be in the lead in terms of territory 
So it's going to be hard for Black to take any of this back. Obviously, Black can't kill this, can't kill that, can't kill that, and uh, White's just going to lead um, as we get into the end game. So here, Black played the uh, Knight's move. And then here, this is actually a common shape that uh, might be good to remember is like when you have these three stones and you have this in kind of invasion. Um, actually, this is probably good to show. Let me show you guys where that shape comes from, actually. So, actually, this is probably good enough. So, when you have an empty corner like this, an old Joseki with the two space high pincer is when white invades and black really wants that side, black can block and extend. And then when, when white pushes, actually it's the same with the uh, one space uh, pincer. Um, if white invades, black extends. But sometimes white can push out. And one, in one of the variations, black can, after this uh, exchange, black can either extend out or honey. And after this, black will usually protect on the outside. And this is kind of the shape that I was talking about. When white invades here, it's pretty much sente on this group because here white can actually hane and cut. And this is a very powerful move um, because if black Atari is here, white can just Atari and Atari. And this code is very, very heavy for black because after white captures, it's, a, it's another Atari. And so it's, very, it's kind of difficult. If black Atari is this way, White can also Atari like this, and then if black descends, white can also Atari here. So, yeah, uh, in either way it's going to be a very heavy coat for black, and white is very light. So, um, this is the kind of shape that I was uh, referring to. So, uh, let me get back to the game. Let's go back to the game. So, after this, white is able to make that Tsuji on the shape. And, uh, yep, so Black starts the Ko like this. And this Ko was, I, I was pretty comfortable with, because even if Black wins the Ko, it's still, there's still a lot of Aji in the top right corner. Although, um, when, although in this case, probably if I were Black, I would probably end this Ko and actually put an attack on White. I think this is the only way for Black to pressure on white and try to get the game back um, because it makes the game much more complicated white's gonna have to deal with this group and see what white's gonna do in the corner later so here probably if white needs to save this then it might be actually an even trade so this might be actually good for black so white probably needs to save the uh, upper this group here and then this will be kind of a more complicated game. I I still think this is good for white, but um, there's actually obviously a lot more chance for white to make a mistake here. Um, so here in the game, uh, black answered, and after this, it's, it's going to be really hard for black to find the next code. The reason why black doesn't want to connect is because now white can just connect because now this code is very light for white. So here, white can just I don't know find an easy code thread. So, yeah, because after this, um, yeah, white's going to be really ahead. Because think about it, here, the this was all originally Black's territory anyway. And so that's not going to be acceptable. Um, so I think this is what's kind of like, starting the co is probably a, a good path to make kind of the game shift more into uh, white's favor here. Okay, and then uh, this move. So, um, <clears throat> here white can't really respond to this because if white responds to one, there's going to be a million more. So, I thought about this a little bit and uh, there's no there's no way to respond. So, I capture. And this was really tempting move because one, it feels really nice. Right? Like it's capturing some stones like right in the middle of Black's territory and gaining a lot. And also, it puts a lot of... Per like. This top right is all very, looks very dangerous. If white lifts the corner, this group will have to scramble to live as well. So the key is really what what is the deal with the lower left? And here black plays a very bold move to capture because not only white black needs to capture, black needs to ensure that this group is connected as well. So that's the attempt. And actually, 
we realized that this is really hard to capture. So after some some sente moves, so here I was trying to get a little bit of profit actually. Um, so obviously right now this is going to be sente, so that will uh, so black probably needs to spend another move. Um, so here I'm trying to get a little more here because I realized after attaching black actually has to haunt me on the inside and I was going to get a little more sente moves first before sacrificing the lower left corner and getting the top right white is going to be ahead so after the double hane um, I think this was a mistake so here if black just connects back obviously the center will be cut off so white can simply Atari and then hane and 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 go back to the top right so black definitely doesn't have enough territory um, in this case so I think this is probably um, a way of uh, giving up um, so here white Ataris and then Ataris and uh, that's the uh, end because right now after if black connects then uh, there's no way for black to surround um, this group even anymore so I think this game was uh, it was very interesting because in the beginning I was actually planning for kind of like the long winded game and uh, I think I, I was relatively su successful in putting pressure in my opponent so that in the end he was forced to kind of play these really uh, aggressive moves um, in order to get it back and uh, taking advantage of countering the aggressive moves um, White was able to finally um, win in, in the end and I think I really want to go back and revisit this part um, you know the all like we have this cutting situation right um, obviously white has the advantage locally because white has one more stone but then you kind of have to evaluate this ladder and I think this was the really the really the most interesting part of this game for me kind of um, judging this you know it's really it's a really big test on like your judgment and ability and how you handle uh, this kind of situation so I, I think I really learned a lot from this game by by reviewing these kind of all these kind of possibilities. I didn't go over all of this in the game because I think it would just take too long, and I'll probably just keep rambling about different stuff. Uh, so I think you'll probably you'll probably be glad that I didn't do that. Um, but if you're interested, I think in, yeah, let me know what you think about this. This is a uh, very interesting and uh, a very big test on your judgment abilities. So. If you guys are able to make proper judgments in a game like this, um, you guys will be professional pretty quickly. <laughs> um, so anyway, hope you enjoyed. Um, if you did, uh, please drop me a like, and uh, I will see you next time.